It's Auntie Kay, Yard Sales Arena, here with Uncle Vinti, the Vintage Tool Man, with the Yard Sales Show for the weekend of September the 1st. It's Oops. Labor Day weekend, so happy Labor Day to everybody. Well, we've been out the past couple of weeks, and it's been slim pickings, but we do want to show you a few of the items that we found. Yesterday at a yard sale, I found, what, uh, two, four, six, two, four, six, eight, nine bottles. I paid $10 for these. These are a couple vintage 1976 7-Up bottles, commemorative bottles. Then the rest are milk bottles. Um, this one still has the writing on it from the dairy in Chevy Chase. Seal test. Seal test. These are also seal test cream tops, which you can see that it has the embossed lettering in it. That's very nice. Another cream top with no marking on it. This we did try to rinse out. It looks like we're uh, that's probably etched. We're probably not going to be able to clean that. Uh, and then this last bottle, I don't know if you guys can see that. It's purple. It has a purple hue to it. You couldn't tell that when it was all filled with dirt. So anyway, I paid $10 for all of those. Originally she wanted $3 each. So I, I think these are worth about five. And who knows on that purple one, I'll have to look it up. All right, next up is this cedar chest. You wanna start again? No. Okay. Uh, next up is this really neat cedar chest. We went to an estate sale that some of our friends were running, but we were there very late, which was a mistake. They said, all oh, the other dealers were here at the crack of dawn. I said, yeah, well, we weren't, and we missed out. But we got this West Branch Novelty Company, Milton, Pennsylvania. It's yeah, a cedar it chest. They were in business from 1900. We'll watch, you know, hit the, hit okay. the. Okay, that's, that's as far as we can go. We didn't pull it out far enough so you guys could see the label. But it says West Branch Novelty Company. We think this is an older one. It's in great shape. Okay. Uh, and we paid 65 for it. One of the other dealers had left a bid for 65 so that's as low as they would go. But they're worth anywhere from 250 to about $350. So, And it's in really nice shape. All right. Next up, a couple of tins. A friend of mine's mom collects these tobacco tins, so he always tells me if I can get them for less than $20, which seems like a lot to me, but anyway, to pick them up and he'll give it to his mom. This is Old Briar Pipe Mixture. I paid $3 for that. And this is a Red Star Big Double Acting Baking Powder. I paid $3 for that also. I was able to look that one up. And that's worth about $10. I couldn't find this one. I think it's older than the others. It's probably worth about $10 also. Then just some kitschy things. This reproduction Coca-Cola tray for a couple of bucks. Uh, people like that hang on their wall. Uh, an old shoe that someone painted recipes on. I have no idea why they did that. Something. 1980 somewhere. Something collectibles. Anyway, I paid uh, 75 cents for that. At the Goodwill this week, I was dropping some items off, and of course I have to go in and look. And when I did, I came in and I saw these things, and they were like a buck each. So I picked them up, and they say Wheaton on the bottom. So I looked them up. You can see this is a Franklin Delano Roosevelt, FDR. And this one is Jackson. Andrew Jackson. So, you know, it, it that obviously has the presidents on there. And I looked up Wheaton, and I found that they started in the late 1800s by a pharmacist, and they originally made commercial pharmaceutical bottles. Then in the early 70s, uh, they came out with these commemorative uh, decanters. And the original ones were marked first edition. I think there were, they made 19. 19 of these from 69 to 76, and these were both from the first edition. And then some other companies picked up uh, the trademark and went on, and I think they did all of the remaining presidents. Anyway, I got two of them. They're not worth that much. Did I uh, look those babies up? Um, I didn't. I think they're probably in that range, maybe 10 bucks each. Not, not a lot, but they're kind of interesting, kind of a fun thing for a novice collector. All right, we stopped at an old barn where a woman has kind of a store set up. She also does estate sales down in Deal. 
she had this it's a singer toy it has a number they actually use these for young girls to learn how to sew it's uh, circa 1900 and it's a number 29945 I bought she had 50 on it I bought it for 35 and it's worth around 70 it's missing the the piece where you would put the thread but that's just a metal piece and we're going to try to find one of those. It's a little rusty but so are a lot of them that are selling online. Oh here, turn it around so they can see it's got the little foot and everything and it does work. Looky there. How about that? Whew. Okay. Uh, next up. At the at my friend's estate sale there was this converted oil lamp there. She sold it to me for a couple of dollars and the reason I bought this was I have this old collection of gumball machine toys from the 50s when I was a kid. This is what I collected, and I used to play with these. Uh, anyway, I have these, and I actually have another jar of them. So I thought that would be nice to display them. I've been trying to come up with a nice way to display all these cute little things, and I thought that will work great. I think I'll replace this little lampshade. doesn't seem to go very well. At the least, I'll cover it. All right. Uh, one of our first stops, it said gigantic or huge yard sale, and usually that means they have two tables. Uh, but in this case, it was true. They re it was really huge. It was in Davidsonville, and uh, even though we were there fairly early, one of the ladies said the tables were almost looked almost empty to her. Uh, we bought this huge canister of these old uh, vintage wooden child's educational blocks. I have some really cute little animals, a lot of letters, and then some just building blocks. These actually sell quite well on eBay, so I'll either do that or uh, put them in the shop. Maybe just leave them there for kids to play with. We bought this and this bundle of cedar shingles that we need to do repair work on some of the items that we get and also they're good for shimming up if you're putting in many cabinets and these two oil lamps that I didn't need uh, for seven dollars so I couldn't pass that up okay so that's that's it for what we've picked up the past couple of weeks I'm gonna turn it over to Uncle Venti he's gonna show you some of the tools that he got Hi, this is Uncle Benty for the yard sale show. This is for Labor Day weekend and the week before, actually. I did find a few tools uh, this weekend at an estate sale. Picked up a bunch of paint thinner and paint and a bunch of tools for $3. I got a couple of wedges, I got a finio, I got a screw extractor, craftsman wrench, a nail puller. This is a, a uh, faucet resurfacer for the uh, for a, a like a shower faucet or whatever with a grommet, and this is a, a small clamp I got and a yardstick. This is probably for sewing. A tailor, yeah, something for measuring. Uh, also, got, also picked up uh, last week a bunch of paint for free. There's Rust-Oleum. Whole box of paint is free. They're Primarily Rust-Oleum, which we reuse a lot, the primer and colors. And I bought these socket holders, a set of three for a dollar. And those are. They sell for 14 about, online. Yeah, 14 15 dollars online. I at another garage sale. I bought this Rockwell drill press. It originally was a radial arm. The, the person had it must have cut it off because it wouldn't fit on their bench, so they cut the radial arm off. So now it's just a regular old drill press. Drill press. Um, it does have a cross, a cheap cross, uh, cross vise that we can use for for machining. Machining. So that, that's nice. Also has a a tuning jig. So that's probably what I'll use it for. Is for as, as a tending jig. Dedicated. Dedicated for that. Yeah. It is missing the table, um, so but I, I'm planning on using it for something else, so that's fine. So I paid 20 for that, and it's worth quite a bit more. It, I do need the motor, which is a little bit of a problem, and a pulley. Yeah, the motor's not the problem. I think the pulley is the problem. Pulley. At another yard sale, I got this jack. This is a, a 2 by 12 jack. Barn jack, and, yes, they call them. Paid a dollar fifty for that. Yeah, very good deal. We have three of those. They make, even if you don't use them, they make great yard art. So I'll paint that up, and it'll look very nice. Okay. And 
the other thing that Aunt oh. Kay got was this revigorator. No, let me. It's revigator. Revigator. The revigator. Look at that thing. It's a crock. The lid is chipped a little bit, and it's missing a spigot. But this is really an interesting piece from the turn of the century. Back then, they thought that radioactivity was actually healthy for you. This crock is lined with a radioactive material, so it gives off radon. It's very porous. Yes, uh, a radium core. It's or. in a radium ore. It's lined with. On the side, it says, "Fill jar every night. Use hydrant or any good water. Drink freely when thirsty and upon arising and retiring. Average six or more glasses daily." Scrub with a stiff brush and scald monthly. Yikes! This all stemmed from the fact that when they first discovered radioactivity, they found it in a lot of wells and in some of the health springs, and they figured that it must be healthy. Initially, the AMA actually regulated these devices to make sure that they were giving off as much radioactivity, radioactivity as they claimed. Of course, then by the 20s, when people were dying off, they realized the danger. And of, uh, of course, from then on, the AMA uh, regulated against the radioactivity. But anyway, it's an interesting piece of uh, medical folklore. And uh, I'm not going to keep it in my house. I'm a little afraid of it because it's, you know, radioactivity is the lifetime is very long. Yeah, the half life is very long. This so is a natural ore with with uranium in it, so its half life is is very long. So anyway, um, it's an interesting piece, but I'm not going to be sleeping next to it. <laughs> okay, so that's it, right? That's it for the yard sale show for Labor Day weekend. We'll be back next week with more yard sale finds.